Good morning guys. Today we will discuss about the statement of general principle of ICMR. ICMR Indian Council of Medical and Research. In this, it has given some guidelines related to the research and uh, clinical trials. So in further PPT, we will discuss one by one topic to be covered. In this PPT, I am just going to cover about the ICMR and its 12 principles. So first of all, uh, what is ICMR, Indian Council of Medical Research? It is a regulatory body which is conducted clinical trial in India. It has prepared 12 principles uh, in 2007 to conduct the clinical trial in a proper manner. It is funded by the uh, Indian government and it is conduct and promote the biomedical research. These 12 principles is uh, one by one i will discuss so before going to the further ppt uh, we will focus in the importance of the icmr in introductory part okay icmr the indian council of medical research the apex body in india for the formulation coordination and the promotion of the biomedical research is one of the oldest and largest medical research body in the world. The ICMR is funded by the Government of India through the Department of Health Research, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. In 2007, the organization established the Clinical Trial Registry India, which is Indian National Registry for the Clinical Trial. Principles Research on human participants pertain to a broad range of scientific inquiry aimed at developing generalizable knowledge that improves health, increases the understanding of disease, and is ethically justified by its social values. Every researcher has some inherent risk and probabilities of harm or inconvenience to participant or communities. Therefore, the protection of the participant should be built into the design of the study. Do not harm none maleficence has been the underlying universal principle guideline healthcare in all system of the medicine around the world. Principles while conducting biomedical and health research, the four basic ethical principles, namely respect for persons, autonomy. Beneficence, non beneficence and justice has been enunciated for the production, the dignity, right, safety and well-being of research participants. These four basic principles have been explained into 12 general principles described below and are to be applied to all biomedical, social and behavioral science research for health involving human participant and their biological material and data. Principle number one, principle of essentiality, whereby after doing uh, due consideration of all the alternatives in the light of existing knowledge, the use of human participants is considered to be the essential for the proposed research. This should be duly vetted by an ethics committee independent of the proposed research. The second one, principle of voluntariness, whereby respect for the rights of the participant to agree or not to agree to participate in research or to withdraw from the research at any time is paramount. The informed consent process ensures that the participant rights are safeguarded. The third one is principle of non-exploitation, whereby the research participants are equitably selected so that the benefits and the burdens of the research are distributed fairly and without the uh, arbitrariness or discrimination. The sufficient safeguard to protect the vulnerable groups should be ensured. The fourth one principle is the principle of social responsibility, whereby the research is planned and conducted so as to avoid the creation and 
deepening of the social and historic division or in any way disturb social harmony in community relationship the fifth principle of ensuring privacy and confidentiality the privacy means the privacy of the patient and confidentiality means the research team or medical team should maintain the confidentiality of the patient or confidentiality should be maintained by the team members of the patient whereby to maintain the privacy of the potential participant he or her identity and records are kept confidential and access is limited to only those authorized however under certain circumstances suicidal ideations homicidal tendency hiv positive status when required by the court of law etc the privacy of the information can be breached in consultation with the ec for the valid scientific or legal reason as the right to life on an individual supersede the right to privacy of the research participant principle of risk minimization this is the sixth one principle hereby due care is taken by all stakeholders including but not limited to the researcher ecs ethical committees sponsor regulators at all stage of the research to ensure that the risk are minimized and the appropriate care and compensation is given if any harm occurs suppose any patient got any harm during the trial so these stakeholders are bound to give the benefits to the particular patient or volunteers the seventh one is principle of professional competence whereby the research is planned conducted evaluated and monitored throughout by the person who are competent and have the appropriate relevant qualification experience and or training means in the seven principle we are just talking about the pi principal investigator and their co members like crc clinical research coordinators so or we can say that the team members who is working as a um, trial members or working in a clinical trial so they have a they should have the full knowledge about the particular trial and they also know each and every guidelines related to the particular research and they have to follow the protocols which is provided by the sponsor so every member should have well qualified well qualification experiences and training to reduce the mistakes in a trial principle of maximization of benefits this is the eighth one principle which is given by the icmr whereby due care is taken to design and conduct the research in a such a way as to directly or indirectly maximize the benefits to the research participant and or to the society the main meaning of this principle is that during clinical trial we have to is main focus on the maximization of the benefits and to read and on reduction of the risk the ninth one principle of the icmr is principle of institutional arrangement whereby the institutions where the research is being conducted have policies for appropriate research governance and take the responsibility to facilitate research by providing the required infrastructure manpower funds and training opportunities principle of transparency and accountability this is the 10th one principle of the icmr whereby the research plan and outcome in maintaining from the research are brought into the public domain through the registries reports and scientific and other publications while the safeguarding the right to privacy of the patient participants and patient stakeholder involved in research should disclose any existing conflict on interest and manage it appropriately the research should be conducted in a fair honest 
impartial and transparent manner to guarantee accountability related records data and notes should be retained for required period for possible external scrutiny and audit principle of totality of the responsibility this is the 11th principle of the icmr whereby all stakeholders involved in research are responsible for their actions the professional social and moral responsibility complied with the ethical guidelines and related uh, regulations are binding on all the stakeholder direct, directly or indirectly the 12th one is the principle of environmental protection in this whereby the researchers are accountable for the ensuring protection of the environment and uh, resources at all stage of the research in compliance with the existing guidelines and regulations so these are total 12 principles of the icmr so uh, after that we will just discuss some question related to this uh, icmr guideline question for the practices here i have given some questions for the practices this question are already discussed in the previous ppts first question is what is icmr indian council of medical research in this question you have to answer about the icmr introductory part of the icmr and you have to also mention what is the main motto and the purpose of the icmr also you can mention some points related to the icmr principles so uh, you can elaborate the some important portion of the guidelines the next question is describe the principle of icmr so i have already taught, taught you that uh, there are 12 principle of icmr so one by one you have to explain the, in this questions the third one is describe principle of transparency and accountability in this you have to mention about the transparency and accountability related to the trial related to the patient beneficence harm informed consent and all so if these point is very important so you have to include all this point in this questions what is principle of ensuring the privacy and confidentiality i have taught you lots of time that the privacy and confidentiality in a in a most of the slide i have taught about the patient rights in a patient rights privacy the privacy of the patient should be maintained and the confidentiality is the responsibility of the medical team or the responsibility of the research member to maintain the confidentiality confidentiality should be only breached in the condition of if you have a better opinion for the patient or you just want to take any adv advice or you just want to take any profitable information related to the patient in that condition you are allowed to breach the confidentiality of that patient so these point you have to include in this ppt references these are some references from where i have taken some points in this ppt uh, you can also go through this references and uh, you will get that there are lots of information related to the uh, this icmr guidelines and uh, in very briefly manner so you are always free to ask me if you have any query related to this ppt or this guideline i am always free thank you